Tennessee. The tale has been around in modern times since about 1933, I think. And there's been a lot of conjecture of what Old Nessie is, the Loch Ness monster. Now I got an eyewitness account here, and I've been trying to draw a picture of of her, I guess. Nessie seems to be a female. But, uh, you know, it's, it's interesting. You got all these reports. Some of them conflict. A lot of them are anecdotal. Actually, all of them are anecdotal. It's eyewitness accounts. There have been a few photographs, but nothing verifiable. Nothing too, too credible to the scientific community. Old Nessie could be a dinosaur extant from 65 million years ago who wandered her way up into the Scottish Highlands. Now, if she was a dinosaur, that would mean that she would have had to have been stealthily navigating the Atlantic Ocean, perhaps, before the most recent Ice Age, when the sea levels were much, much higher, navigating from 65 million years ago, or it's a very close-knit family that has somehow managed to reproduce for that length, that long span of time without any uh, extremely detrimental, evolutionarily detrimental maladies and mutations from inbreeding, or it's a 65 million year old beast, and then somehow it worked its way through these caves up into the Scottish Highlands in this long, long lake they call Loch Ness. Anyways, uh, thank you to Jared Lankenauer. I am honestly as thrilled to get this suggestion. So, Jared, thank you for it. I think it's it's going to be fun to uh, to explore and talk about some of the history, some of the oldest history from 500 years after Christ. It's 1,500 years ago, pretty much, so we're going to keep it quiet. We're going to just relax and learn. Scottish Highlands. So here's, if you see, 
Loch is a Scottish Gaelic word for lake or, a, or for a sea inlet. In the Loch Ness, the loch named Ness, is a large, deep freshwater loch in the Scottish Islands, extending from approximately miles 37 kilometers west southwest of Inverness that we just saw its surface is actually 15 meters 16 meters or 52 feet above the sea level so and of course it's best known for the alleged sightings of its cryptozoological Loch Ness monster Nessie
bodies of water, at least the Atlantic Ocean around it. But it's huge. It's 25 miles long, 23. Um, and sorry, you non-Americans and English folk. I, I just conceive numbers and measurements better in, in the imperial system, which is a extreme fault of mine. I, I recognize that. But, uh, yeah, 755 feet deep at its deepest point. Of course, you know, it, it varies, of course, but uh, that's 230 meters deep. So it's, it's probably pitch black down there, and uh, who knows, it's gold for a reptile. A reptile might be able to live who knows how long
as evidence for the creature's existence as early as the 6th century AD. And we all know the farther back in time things go, the more liable they are to be distorted, but also serve some sort of function or purpose, and perhaps, perhaps, there is a very logical, scientific, reasonable explanation for the endurance of this myth, if it is a myth, and perhaps what that is. Let's see, it's count up the death tolls for, from drownings over in the Loch Ness the past 15 versus other locks that Nessie apparently does not swim in inhabit. So I suppose there could be some sort of measurement, some sort of quantification of how many deaths were prevented by drowning because people in the town of, along the lake and lock of Ness are badasses and you just go in regardless. But um, nonetheless, an interesting thing about that is that for 1,000, nearly 1,400 years at least, until 1933, there was no mention absolutely no mention of the Loch Ness Monster, um, nor any other large beast, for that matter, swimming in the Loch. is a four-finned 
as it's, uh, it's uh, can be a claim of its veracity, I suppose you could say. And we have a modern sighting which can conjoin with that claim and add a certain amount of of, uh, of merit to the story. Okay, here's one actually. So before 1933, but not relative to St. Colombo in 500 AD. It was in 1871. October 1871. Oh, I wonder how that looks. Now the lights do diffuse. How do I look? Now you guys are swimming in the lock. How do you feel? You should feel pretty safe. Because we're here. We're here together this out. In October 1871, D. McKenzie of Balneen, Balneen reportedly saw an object resembling a log or an upturned boat wriggling and churning in the, up the, in the water. The object first moved slowly
motorcyclist claiming that he saw not too long in 1934, I believe. He saw as well as George Spicer something very similar to what George and his wife had seen. a windy day. 
honestly, it looks, it looks so small. It really looks like it's zoomed in, and it's more like maybe only two or three or four feet. Which, in that case, it could easily be an otter or a swan. And here we have an artist picture of a plesiosaur. That's what a lot of people think Nessie really is. Lots of pictures here. And here, of course, we have something very, very artificial, but I don't know what that is. Whoa, and this is a pretty cool picture. object. 
almost 60 years later after this first sonar, so the technology has improved, no doubt, really, no doubt has improved. In 2011, a sonar scan team led by Marcus At Atkinson found another mysterious object 75 feet.
Technology Review in 1976. And we can see, of course, those fins match perfectly with a drawing that someone has done out of their imagination. So, I'm sorry, Jared, I'm not being overly committed to the idea that this is real. But I, I am not discounting the... I guess I'm discrediting the fact that it, it might be a plesiosaur. But I, I certainly won't dismiss the possibility that it's a large... some other large reptile or even mammal. Maybe some large species of of otter, you know, by prehistoric, um, you know, like, uh, megafauna, I think me megafauna would be the term, one of the large, like, saber tooths or woolly mammoths, it could be in that class of animals. I know there were huge, huge variants of sloths, and maybe otters, too, so, I think this is actually really making me question existence itself. No, I'm just kidding. It's, uh, it's definitely not something to easily dismiss. So, since then, Robert Ryan's. So, since then, those sightings, there have been fewer, fewer sightings. And no significant evidence of the beast's existence. And Robert Rhines suggests this is due to global warming. He's actually the former president of the Academy of Applied Science Sciences in Boston. And Boston is like a an American hub of and the intellectual elite. So that's he's Let's get 
my videos, I expect. I have such a poor understanding of, of what I can accomplish in a certain amount of time that I genuinely try to make most of my videos 20 to 30 minutes, and they end up being like an hour and a half, and I edit them down to like 45 minutes. So, um, yeah, this thing could have been 66. It would have had to live 66 million years longer than all the other dinosaurs. Now, um, yeah, there are sharks and crocodiles and gators, but, uh, nothing that large still exists, except for, you know, again, some crocodiles get can reach 20 feet, so it could feasibly be a freshwater crocodile or alligator, which would be interesting if it really was. My guess is that it would be, it would probably be one of those huge otters. I would think it would just be very intelligent. So, uh, oh, okay, so if we're talking about those geological timescales, 65 million years ago, Loch Ness was covered in a layer of ice over one kilometer thick until just 20,000 years ago. So there's only one possible explanation for how a plesiosaur would get there. Nessie would have had to lurk in the Atlantic Ocean for nearly, nearly 66 million years. Of course, you know, not Nessie herself, but her descendants. And the monsters would have had to navigate through a tiny, treacherous, and extremely shallow corridor of waters to make it into the lock. Thinking of onto 
social status incentive for you to want to see a Loch Ness Monster instead of a fence. Although I don't know what they meant by fence, whether it was like a fence with a pattern on it. Maybe that's what it was. But this article doesn't mention that. monster has baffled people for 1,500 years, 1,500 years. No tangible evidence yet exists that the creature has come to light. It's, at this point, the stuff of actual legends. enjoyed this. <laughs>